Now listen to what was leading here. Because then he raised, he smote him aside and raised him up. But you understand the stasis. Peter's laying down. And you raise him up from a laying position to a sitting position. Like when you get up. Not many people I know wake up and just jump up. Tristan is the master of that. Tristan wakes up in stages. I just watch him sometimes. He'll wake up and sit up right away. Look around. And they look like that. <laughs> and it cracks me up, you know? We take naps together a lot. He's, he's been my joy in these days. Then he'll, 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 he'll look at me like with one eye. Raise his head up, make sure it's me, touch my face, then <laughs> go back out again. He wakes up slowly. He's not, he's not gonna wake up and start crawling and get active. He takes his time waking up. He raised Peter up to a sitting position. I talk about you make God make one step, you make he makes two. Here's the first step. He raised him up. But not all the way up. He's been standing, he's been standing. Just raised up from laying down. Saying, arise up quickly. Sometimes we're in chains. It can be a multitude of situations and things in our life that has us chain. The only way to get out the chain is when you're being raised up is to get up. God many times not, that will not stand you up to be delivered. He'll just raise you up. So now you're sitting up on your bed. But the ultimate act that the angel could have done and didn't do was caused Peter to stand up. Peter had to stand up on his own. There's some things that God is going to do for you. Then there's some things that God's going to command you to do, and you got to do it. He's not going to help you. He's not going to assist you. Why not? Because you can do it. But it's not until Peter stood up that the chains fell off. <clears throat> Had he been sitting up by raised by, by the angels work, the miracle could not happen. And there's a miracle for the chains to fall off. But the chains will not fall off unless Peter did something. He had to stand up and he had to do it quickly. Sometimes there's a window of time that God operates in. It's your time. And sometimes we want to indulge ourselves and delay things and so forth. Some things got to be done quickly when the angel says, get up. He said, he got up. And when he got up, surprise, surprise, a miracle takes place. Then God did something and took the chains off. And suddenly by the act of standing up, Peter was free. That's something? I'm talking to somebody. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself. The angel could have put his clothes on. Do you agree? He could have dressed Peter. But he told Peter to gird yourself. I'm not going to dress you. Because you have the ability to dress your own self. I'm here to deliver you. And I'm in the process of performing a miracle, but you got to dress yourself and get ready for it. Then he said, and bind all my sandals. God's about to take you somewhere, but you have no shoes on. But he's not going to put the shoes on you. They're right there. Put them on. Again, this is something that Peter had in his power to do himself. 
Is that English there? He's standing right there. Now again, he couldn't have gone lately because of my affliction. I've had to have help putting on my shoes. That's kind of humiliating. I don't know if I find him. The Lord has helped me enough for it doesn't bother me so much. And I got some house tickets on today because this foot here, it's been swollen. It just won't, it won't bend. I put my dress shoes on. It's too painful to walk. That's when I walk. <coughs> one foot goes down soft, the other one like that. And it's, like, it's like a cripple man walking. So I'm kissing it to the board today. I don't want to make a bunch of noise going there, so I wore my soft shoes. I might come with my socks on Wednesday night. <laughs> you understand why, all right? Put on your sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, cast thy garment about thee. Get up, gird yourself, put on your sandals, and put on your clothes. Things that God, for God to do a miracle in your life, he's going to require that you do what you can. Now, Peter could have said, I don't want to put on sandals. Or, Peter could have put his sandals on. I don't, I don't wear sandals. The sandals are to be strapped on, just clean on. He could have said, I don't buy my sandals. That's not how I do it. I got a pair of shoes. They're not even a year old. And one day, in the garage, I decided I don't want to tie me anymore. Don't ask me why I decided that. So I took the laces out. I only had four eyelids. Sort of. Then I decided I don't want to put them on no more. I'm going to turn them to some house slippers. We got house slippers called mule. They just slide into them, just go back to them. So I turned my shoes into a pair of mules. <laughs> now Peter could have told the angel that, you know, I don't back, I don't buckle on Now again, we're servants. So servants expected to be obedient and follow instructions. He didn't say, put your shoes on. What did he say? Bind on your sandals. God's about to take you for a walk, but you have to bind your sandals. And I've learned when I'm like the back there, wild the grass or whatever. When I'm walking, wearing my shoes as mules is a burden. Because you can't pick your feet up. You slide. You suck your feet. You know? Like house slippers. Those who have house slippers, there's no back to them. You don't pick your feet up, you slide your feet, right? It's lazy, <laughs> I know that. But sometimes it's quite being lazy, right? When it gets serious, when I take the trash out, the trash cans out, I'll reach down and, you know, put them on. Peter could have been a personality whereby he said, I don't ever bind my sandals. Let me just put them on. Had he done so, he'd still be in the prison that he's in. And never get delivered from it. Cast thy garment about thee. Again, Peter could have said, look, I got on clothes. The garment here was talking about the outer garment. The cloak, as the Bible calls it. He could have told the angel, I don't need a cloak. I'm okay. I'm good to go. I don't feel cold. Well, the angel didn't ask him how he felt. He said, put a coat on. And sometimes we don't get results from God that God is trying to do in our lives because we're just not obedient. 
We're just going to do what God said to do. The church is praying for Peter. But with the church then, I don't know if they recognize it or not, it was beneficial to the church as much as it was for Peter. Peter needed the church, and the church <coughs> needed Peter. And Peter's deliverance was dependent upon the church, but by the same token, the deliverance of individuals in the church was dependent upon their prayer for Peter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> and it wouldn't be enough to say, I'm praying for Peter. They'd actually pray for him. Now, I'm, I'm going to eat my nerve and go on. God gave us something so simple to do in this situation regarding me. He said, when you pray, he didn't say you should pray. He said, when you do. When you pray, and he didn't tell you to get on your knees. You didn't break the curve and break the again. You did it work. Doing your car on the freeway. I passed to your mind. Say, Lord, remember, Pastor. Did yes. send a text. Okay? I know you guys love me. There's no thought about that. I know. You mean that very abundantly clear. But on various occasions, some of you have said to me, Pastor, I don't always text, but I'm praying for you. And I've been polite and kind to you. I know you are. But the real matter, I lie. Because I don't know. I don't know that. I believe that you are because you said so. But I have no proof. I have no text that said you prayed. So I don't know what you did. And if God said to do it that way, and I believe that God said to do it that way, for whatever reason God said it for. It's going to be beneficial to me, but just as beneficial to you. Amen. Somehow, my deliverance is linked to your prayer, and your deliverance, whatever you're going through, is linked to your prayer for me. Amen. Some of you have experienced that already. Yes. Yes. That the prayer you pray for me has had an effect in your own life on something totally unrelated to my situation, but something you've been going through, your prayers and answer my prayers and signs and says, Lord, let the prayers that have been coming from me be returned back on them. <laughs> just, just take those prayers and turn them back on them. When they go through their time of affliction, their time of trial, and whatever they're going through, all the prayers that come in, Lord, take them all together in one big bundle and put them on their heads <laughs> and pray for them. Let them be prayed for them. Prayer is made without ceasing in the church unto God for him. It says in verse 6. After Peter received his instructions to rise up, to put on his sandals, to gird himself, what have you, four things he's going to do. <coughs> the last thing the angel said to Peter was, follow me. The deliverance wasn't, wasn't done yet. He's still in prison. Chains are gone, but it hasn't gone anywhere. If he stayed in prison, the possibility existed that the chains could be put back on. He had to follow him out of the prison, whatever prison you might be in. God can release you inside your prison, but then you got to follow him out of it. The angel then grabbed by the hand and yanked him out. The angel on his way out says, okay, follow me. Now, I've never done a jailbreak out. I don't expect to. Okay? But I imagine just the chains falling off. At nighttime, it was dark at nighttime, would cause a disturbance. And those 16 soldiers guarding him become alert. 
that he's about to be set free. But when the commandment of the Lord goes forth to follow you, no enemy can stop you. Amen. Got that? This is the only enemy can, who can stop you at that point is you. <laughs> you can't look around and say, well, you know, I, I, I want to, but I got all these young, but I'm, 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 I'm going to call their attention to the fact that I'm leaving here. That's okay. You're leaving here to command the Lord. He said, follow me. So if he said, follow me, he must know what he's doing. He must know a way out of the prison you don't know. Right? Yes. Who'd have thought that the angels were going to go up the front door? <laughs> I would expect to start for an angel to climb from through a window. Or there's a secret passage or a cord or somewhere that you know, was not known by everybody else. But, you know, we're told later on that the prison door was open. And he, and he went out and followed him. And wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. There's a scripture in Psalms. I like to preach. Because it has to be an occasion I like to preach it. It says, when the Lord turned again our captivity, and they came out of Babylon, it says, we were as those that dreamed. Got to do something for you like a dream? Yes. It just seems so miraculous and so impossible that something you thought would never happen in your life, and all of a sudden you're you're wondering if this is real or my dream. <laughs> you know, Peter thought he was dreaming. <clears throat> it was a vision. And when they were past the first, the first, and the second <laughs> ward, I'm assuming that that's the first set of four angels, the first set of four guards. And the second set of four guards, they came into the iron gate that leadeth into the city. And here's the first time we get a metal involved in the situation. Second time, we got the chains first, and now there's an iron gate. And sometimes we don't move with God because of the iron gate ahead. We're trying to figure out how do I get deal with the iron gate in my life. Not knowing that once you're obedient to God and follow him, the iron gate's gonna just open. You ain't gotta worry about it. Is that what it says here? It says, and the iron gate that led to the city was open to them of his own accord. Like one of those automatic doors. I'm all, I, like, I like the ones of automatic doors that get automatic when you get right to them. <laughs> you know, you're walking up to a naked stall because you know how much you're open or not. Right? If you're walking to a glass door, you don't talk about it. <laughs> and they went out and passed on through one street. He had been set free, but there is another street. <coughs> but what's he doing? Following him. God knows your street. He knows how many streets you have. And all you gotta do is follow him. Whether it's one street, 10 streets, or 50 streets, just follow him. Where am I going? Doesn't matter. You're following him. He knows where he's going. He's a, he's a, he's a servant who's obedient, who will say, okay, let's go. Follow him, he's the same in the world. He ain't got nowhere you're going. Do you? You can go in the dark as they did. They're making a dark move, and the fact that it's dark and Peter didn't have a flashlight didn't matter. He's following the angel who was the light. That's all you needed. And forthwith, the angel departed from him. Now, when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety. <laughs> I'm looking for that testimony. Mm -hmm. Now I know for sure mm -hmm. that the Lord had sent his angel mm -hmm. and delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews who want to see me dead. Mm -hmm. At first, it's like a dream. Mm -hmm. You can be locked up in situations for so long some time that deliverance is not even a thought. Then it happens like a dream. Then they all along like this.